Welcome to our voices. I have two special guests with me on this special occasion. Again, this is a very, very interesting and special story. I have with me Miss Bernice Henry and Mr. Daryl Smith. They are both creators and executive directors for the Black History Museum in Ashton, Kentucky. And Bernice, Daryl, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, doing good, fine, good. thank you. And again, thank you very much for coming on on such short notice. I do apologize. Um, things came up, and again, and put the blame on me, at Bernice. So please, by all means, don't get the belt, okay? Or don't tell me to go get a switch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, before I go into my questions, uh, again, uh, you all are starting a project, and I, I gave a little uh, a, a brief introduction, but Daryl, please tell the viewers what you're doing. Well, um, we are starting a Black History Museum in Ashland. Um, it all started when I started my Ashland, Kentucky Black History page on Facebook in uh, May 2020. It took off. Um, I added uh, probably close to 4,000 articles and pictures. I've got over 650 members. These are all people that um, used to live here, um, relatives of people used to live here, people that love Ashland. Um, the history here in Ashland is, um, the black history that is, is dying. So I want to try to save it. So with that being said, um, my aunt um, found a building for us and we decided to turn it into a museum. And I could let her go ahead and, and go into that part of it. Um, but basically that's what we're doing. It's gonna be um, for Ashland, Kentucky black history and for general black history. And Bernice, jump in. All right, I'll start with the reason that we chose the building. It's called, the actual name is the C.B. Knuckles Community Center and Black History Museum. And we left that name on there, the C.B. Knuckles Community Center, because C.B. Knuckles was the principal of the only black school, Booker T. Washington, that existed in Ashland, Kentucky. And this building was named in honor of him. And I don't think very uh, many people actually realized uh, that the building was in existence and had his name on it. It belonged to the Housing Authority. And I've been on the board of the Scope Towers Housing Authority for many years, served as a board member. And at that time, the building um, held several different purposes, but it recently became empty. Uh, it was even a school uh, for autism for a while, among many other uses. But it seemed such a waste for this beautiful building just to be sitting and not used at all. So if you want something, then you inquire about it. And I did, I asked about the building. And of course it had to go through a process through the board with board pending board approval. And uh, they unanimously uh, thought it was a marvelous idea that we were gonna use the building for something that could um, involve the entire community. It sits, in part of um, a housing development. 
It's on the, uh, located on a standalone building in that particular location. So it's ideal to in include a part of the community that wouldn't otherwise be able to go to a lot of museums and um, different activities. So it's serving many purposes. Um, Daryl and I have talked about our love uh, for Black history and and I've been pretty much an activist for the majority of my life, doing what I could to bring into the community uh, bits and pieces of, of Black history that I've learned. So this way we can include all of it and then just um, display these exhibits that we've talked about and events and activities to the entire community and not just the community, we wanna go further than that. We want to involve the whole tri-state area because we sit in the West Virginia, Ohio, tri-state uh, Kentucky uh, borders. So we want to involve all aspects of the community. I don't know how much more you want me. Do you want me to go on? It is totally up to you. And, look at, <laughs> and Bernice, I'm not gonna fight you. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you that we were very enthusiastic. And once we presented this to the community, so many people were so uh, excited about it and so pleased that they started contributing. We've had all kinds of books and artifacts and articles and memorabilia that have been donated from many, many people in the community. And we also had a lot of things that have been mailed to us from people who live other than Ashland. So it's been received um, quite well in this community. I'm gonna let Daryl take on a little more about the things that we have received. I, I agree. Can you um, hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, yes. Okay. Um, yes, I agree with <laughs> We have received a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, I, I just got actually a huge what? Obama um, um, cutout poster. Um, but the, the items that we've received so far, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be very interesting. Um, the museum, we plan on having a um, library along with um, an education room to teach Black history education, um, also genealogy. So anyone that wants to come in and use their genealogy, they can look up their ancestry. Um, the education we're doing for the children and for adults, but the children, it will be for free. The adults can, they can give a donation to the museum. We, um, I mean, the activities that we have planned, events, speakers, um, you name it, we will most likely have it. And we've got enough time now to where we can really, really focus and get, get everything the way we want it. I'm actually out of town on vacation and I just went to the Philadelphia Black History Museum um, just this past weekend. It was, it was great. Um, got a lot of inspiration. Uh, took a lot of pictures, picked up a few things. I'm actually going to the Black History Museum in D.C. in the morning. And I plan on going to another one, um, a couple in New York as well. So I'm trying to go around and get as much inspiration as I can. This is something that's going to bring um, the community, I think, closer together. This is something... Um, Ashland is a great place to live, and I think when people find out about this, when they're coming through, they're going to want to stop. They're going to want to look. Um, I, I don't know what else. Aunt Bernice, do you? No, we do want, this has been the missing piece in our community. Daryl and I talked about that. Um, when you talk about we're in the Appalachian area, and uh, people fail to understand that there was a lot of African-American history throughout this Appalachian area. 
So we want to, uh, so much of so many things that we've learned from the articles that we've given, there were things that I knew that were told to me, uh, as was most of our history, has been a lot of verbal history. But as far as having it in one specific place and, and uh, just individual books that people can open up and look at photo albums and pictures and articles about famous people. We had a lot of famous people who came out of our community and went on and lived productive and special lives other than Ashland have contributed very much to societies. So we've got inventors, we have athletes, we have uh, actors, uh, you name it. We've screenwriters. Screenwriters. We have a little bit of everything. So we hope to spotlight these people. We have a lot of their memorabilia. So uh, we're excited about that. It's not just someone that's in a book. It's a person that actually lived here. So I find that exciting, and I know that other people will as well. You say that uh, a lot of famous people came out of Ashland. Please name a few. Well, I can name the one young man who was responsible for writing the screen for, uh, for Ray, the movie. He's now deceased, Jimmy White. And, and we're going to have his daughter, I just spoke with her not too long ago, she's looking for some of the autographed or handwritten uh, dialogue that her dad ha actually had. She's going to give it to the museum so that we can display that. So we might not have been around him when he was writing, but we're still going to be able to experience it. We also had a, a young man who um, created, became a millionaire, created, um, it was an invention for a device, maybe more than a device, a medical device for patients who um, were suffering from cancer. And the reason being someone in his family was suffering. So he came up with an easier way for people to receive uh, medication. So <laughs> we've contributed quite a bit to society. And I want people to know all about these things. When you decided to move this forward from a dream, I'm sorry, from a, a dream to a thought, and to now reality. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Have there been any opposition in stopping you from trying to complete this project? Daryl? Um, <laughs> well, Ashland, I've, I've lived in Ashland all my life, and it's a great community. Um, something like this that we're doing now we would you would never see back in the 80s the 90s you'd never see anything like this um maybe in a church basement possibly um but as far as i'm sure there probably are a few um that may not want to see this separate that um but uh, and they I think they would kind of more want it to be in the main museum which is the highlands um but I think having two museums is a wonderful thing. And it's also very, it's, it's diversifying. Um, so with that being said, we have received so much positive energy and so many blessings. And probably about $67,000 we have received mm -hmm. um, from the community. Um, <laughs> We received a large um, anonymous donation of 50 grand. That's part of it. But, um, you know, said Ashland is a small area and it's, it's grown and um, it's become more and more diverse. And I'm, I'm really proud. I moved away from Ashland um, in the 90s and uh, moved in, uh, in this area, actually, New Jersey. Lived up here for a long time. And it was a culture shock for me. Um, but like I said, this is a huge step for Ashland. 
Um, the support we have received has been just wonderful. So if there's one or two that may not like a, a Black History Museum being in Ashland or think it should be kind of maybe possibly in the Highlands, that's about it. Other than that, it's been nothing but but generosity. When you agree, Aunt Bernice? I would agree. We've had so many positive uh, telephone calls. Uh, when we started taking um, contributions or gifts or things that people wanted to donate, uh, we had people call us daily uh, wanting to drop off a book or uh, some articles that maybe a parent of theirs had kept. So it isn't just things that they're invested in this museum. I think it's going to be an integral part of this community. As I said, it's the piece of the puzzle that has been missing because we haven't had a lot of, there's not a lot in our history books about um, the um, black history. And, and the only thing that you hear are things about here, uh, the things that we, we most readily recognize. But as far as individual stories and things that uh, we really want to um, teach to people so that they know more, the more you know about people, the more comfortable you feel around them. And I think understanding where a people come from or listening to their life stories, we all have stories to tell. Um, Daryl's younger, he hasn't gone through a lot of the things. I went to segregated schools. I went to Booker T. Washington schools, but I also graduated from an integrated school. So I had a varied education and I think I have a different vantage point uh, than perhaps some other people. So I can tell them about my experiences. I can show them some of the things rather than just tell them, show examples of that. And when people actually learn more about history, then they have more of a love and understanding for it. Also, I'd like to jump in and say something if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, the Highlands Museum in Ashland um, has been there for years. It's, it's a huge, huge museum. Um, they actually asked me to be on the board, governing board, just recently. Um, and I will most likely be the first African-American on that board, which, which I think is a huge step. We will be collaborating with them. You know, um, and I, I wanted to bring that out. I wanted to mention that because, again, that's that's really part of how Ashland has changed so much. As you are building this dream, mm -hmm. what are the dimensions of this Black History Museum? How big is this going to be? Oh, the square footage. I mean, the, I, I, and I apologize. I don't, one side of it has offices and um, where the education room, board room. The other side is a large open space, gallery space. Um, it's smaller than a gym, but it's a nice big size and it has a kitchen. Um, you know, our aspirations, of course, are in the future to go bigger, you know. Um, we would like to, uh, um, in the future, go downtown um, and, and get something larger, you know. Um, but uh, where we're at now, it's a great building. It's a, it's a great, it, it's a big enough space for us. I know how we both are. So once we get started, we're probably going to run out of room. And we'll probably be using the boardroom as storage or office as storage. But, um, you know, uh, the exciting part about it is, there's probably going to be 40 different, 30 to 40 different displays just for Ashland, Kentucky Black history alone. And of course, general Black history, I mean, I, that's, I mean, you just keep going with that. So. <laughs> now, excuse me. <clears throat> yes. But, man, Davis, sure. we also, because we want to include the community, we've also brought along the, um, Boyd, Greenup County, 
uh, branch of the NAACP. They have a room that will service their office in that building because, um, you know, membership has gotten low. We want to help them to build up their membership and hopefully more people coming into the museum will give you an opportunity to, that's also a part of our history and a vibrant part of our history that I think sometimes people have forgotten about. So I just wanted to throw that piece in there too. Okay. Have you all reached out to the state uh, division of tourism? To let them know, hey, this is what you're doing. You know, can the, I mean, can the state help uh, help you or reach your goal monetarily? We haven't as of yet, but we plan on um, talking more and more uh, to different. We've um, applied more for more grants, and uh, we know there are many out there. We were just waiting for some papers to come through uh, so that it would show our non that we are a nonprofit. So uh, now that we have most of those things in place, then we can move further along and go ahead and apply for these grants. Yes, we do plan on. Yes, and we are a nonprofit now. We, we, we received that letter. So we are completely nonprofit, nonprofit and incorporated. Nonprofit meaning 501c3? That is yeah. correct. Yeah. I want to see three. Okay. All right. Right. Now, tell me a feel-good story, like something that you all have received that will go into the museum. That's it's not money. G give me something that that you received that has touched your heart. Wow. Um, okay, I'll give you one example. A friend of mine from Chicago, um, he drove in actually from Chicago to Ashland, which is about six hours. He brought me, what was it, Bernice, 20 books? Yes. 20 books, bookmarks. I mean, a whole lot of stuff to start for our library. And this is a friend of mine. Um, and he stayed for a few hours, had to get back. That did touch me. But my friends have been very supportive, as my aunts as well. But but I think that touched me and my aunt as well um, for him, for Richard to drive in like he did and bring those things to us. Now, that's just one. You know, uh, comparatively, my, my aunt Angel has been um, bringing things <laughs> there for a while. It was daily. Um, I can't even tell you. Um, how much stuff that my aunt Angel Hill has brought to us. So many, so many items, you know, it's, it's, and we had another lady also. Um, it was the book, wasn't that correct? That we yes. received? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a book that we received. Um, we've had people just walk in and kind of drop things off. So um, things like that, it means a lot. And, and also as well, I, I'm going to enjoy making the little cards that say donated by or on loan from. Um, that right there is going to show, you know, diversity and everything that people want to do. They want to see this happen. You know, I, I think it's a beautiful thing that you're doing this because uh, it's bad enough that and we hear this uh, CRT. And, you know, yes. <laughs> now it's, I mean, of course, it, it has died down, but, you know, it, 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 it trust me, it, it, will, it will rear its ugly head again, and people will say it's uh, CRT. Uh, here in West Virginia, we are dealing with the possibility of this anti-racism bill where teachers cannot, in my opinion, cannot teach Black history because it offends or it makes white folks uncomfortable. Do you plan to have material in your museum um, that's, I mean, it, it may be blunt, but this is the truth. Would you have something like that in your museum? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But we, we, it, it, it is history. We will have everything there. 
Um, yes, yes. Um, I have friends that have children and white, and they uh, they had questions. So you know, th this is if you're not educated on something, you don't know. You know, so so no, we're not going to sugarcoat anything, um, but we want to make sure it's there that people understand because again, it is history. So um, yes, I would agree. Sorry, and Bernice, did you want to add to that? Uh, and and with our you know, we will be, I will be uh, conducting Black history classes. And in, within those classes, from the youngest to the oldest, we're going to introduce facts that they may never have heard of before. I always enjoyed going, of course, the only opportunity you had to present things used to be during Black History Month, of course. But the, I used to always say, well, you know, we lived the other 11 months in the year, as well as February. Uh, there were events and activities and things that occurred. Uh, we, we do live beyond February. And I think once people understand, when I, when I say to you, and I repeated that many times, there are pieces that have always been missing from the puzzle. And some people never understood, even African-American people didn't quite understand, well, we don't want to hear about that old stuff. Uh, we don't want to hear about that old Uncle Tom. I don't want to hear about those spirituals. I don't want to know about that. But the more you know, the more you have to be proud of, because you know what you came from. You know what your ancestors, what the ancestors gave up, what they lost in traveling through the Middle Passage, what they had to go through prior to uh, slavery, and every aspect of slavery. Yes, we need to talk about it because people need to understand, you know, it wasn't just something, some little minimize it to make it something less than what it was. They need to truly understand and know the story. Um, just like the Holocaust, uh, people, that's not just an event that happened. Some people got hurt. No, it's much deeper than that. So if we teach the, the youngest and then reintroduce it to older people, I think people begin to understand more. So that's really what our museum, and I guess I can speak freely because Daryl and I've talked about it. We want it to be a living organism, not just a place that you walk in and say, oh yeah, that's a nice display, or that's a beautiful exhibit. That's a beautiful, it's something that you would experience when you would come through. It was a, it would be a feeling that you would experience, thoughts that you would take with you. We, we're actually pouring our souls into this museum. So we want people, all people, to come in and gather what they can from it and take it with them. This is to be a living legacy that both of us, and I'll probably be gone way before he will, so... Yeah. It is a legacy for me. Now, yes, about, I do. No, no, don't talk about leaving anytime soon. Now, talk about, I may be long gone. No, don't say that. Damn. No, don't say that. She always, she always says that. Come on, Aunt Bernice, now. Come on now. <laughs> no, but I just, that's that's how it means. It's not, I have a passion. For, we, we are very passionate about this. It's not just something to do. It's not just a an event so that people will say, oh, look what they did. No, we want to make things change. We want to leave something that some uh, someone can realize, sit down and realize, I never knew that. I never experienced that way. I never looked at it that way. And that's when things start to change. Yes. I agree. I agree. Yes. And, and I think we'll be, we'll be stewards of this, um, of this project and this museum. And um, when we're long gone, we're hoping someone else will keep it going. That That is the plan, keep it going. That's exactly what we want and make it grow. Just keep it going. 
have a few more questions and I'm gonna let you all go. So basically to, to once the museum is built and is open. Yes. It, you know, of course as a 501c3, donations will be the, 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 the driving force in sustaining the museum, is that correct? Donations and grants. We have several grants where we will, we can now apply for. Okay. So um, they're out there and, and it's just a matter of, of getting uh, the right grant, getting in touch with the right people so that we can have access to these things. Okay. So you have, you, you have, have the existing building right now. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of converting everything over and of course, putting the pieces in place inside to make it the, the Black History Museum, correct? Yes. That is correct. Yes. Right okay. now they are putting a new roof on the building. And uh, then after they completed that, they'll do painting in the gallery room, which is the, the largest room. We've already done painting and um, some changes in the office areas. So. Yes. And the outside area, we have a, our signs are in place, yes. And there will be new landscaping outside as well. Uh -huh. um, which um, I'm excited about. Yes. Okay. One last question. Um, will you get in contact with uh, state highways to have them put a sign up to say, you know, exit, exit, say exit three, you know, Black History Museum? Will you, I mean, are you going to get in contact with them to, to make that, arrangements to- I, I, That to is away? something. I know we're going to have a sign in Ashland to, for, for direction, that is. Uh, but I hadn't thought about that. And um, we will. We will. I appreciate you bringing that up. To be honest with you, I, I mean, I normally think of everything. Both of us do, but no, we, that's something we did not think about. But um, yes, we certainly will make some calls regarding that. I appreciate you mentioning that. No problem, no problem at all. Yes. Now, I'm at the end. <laughs> and before I let you go, I, look here, I, 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 I'm, I'm enjoying this. And I normally give my guest one minute, the final word. Now, Daryl, I'm going to give you one minute. <laughs> but Aunt Bernice, I'm going to give you two. <laughs> <laughs> So, at, 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 you know, please give me some final thoughts. Uh, talk about what you want to talk about. Whatever comes to, uh, comes to your mind, whatever you want to share. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, uh, I'm on vacation, but I've still got the museum on my mind daily. My aunt keeps telling me, Daryl, enjoy your vacation. But it's hard, you mm -hmm. know, because I am excited. So, you know, I'm looking forward to this. I, I cannot wait to get back in there and delve into it. Um, this is going to be a, a huge change for Ashland, a huge change. And, and I'm, I'm so, so, so grateful and blessed. And our church also has been very supportive. New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Stanley McDonald, he, he's been very supportive. He's actually one of our board members. Okay. Now, when you, another, another question uh, came to my mind. Sure. What's the expected date that you open your doors? No, we're what, hoping what, what, what would you like? I mean, you know, just Fe February 2023, Black History Month. That that's um that's when we want to open, to be honest with you. Uh, okay. but but okay. we are not, but I want to also make this clear. It, it's it's going to be on point. The doors will not open until it's just the way we want it. This isn't going to be some little country museum. This isn't going to be something you just kind of whip through and you know this is going to be um very very nice and uh very very sleek that's why i'm going to a lot of these different museums here in the cities you know um there's a there's a lot of things that i plan on doing and my aunt as well so yeah okay 
And Bernice, give me your final thoughts. <laughs> it's hard to put it into just a few words. As you can tell, I, I do like to talk a great deal, but I hope I'm not, it's not just chatter. I hope that I leave people um, with thoughts and, and memories. I know one of my favorite uh, quotes is from uh, a very special person to me, Maya Angelou is, <laughs> I just, I loved her, I loved her. She said, people may not always remember, and I'm, I'm just paraphrasing it, what you said, but they will always remember how you treated them. And that's the way I want people to feel when they come to the museum. They may not remember everything that was said, but they will know uh, uh, that Daryl and my heart have been placed in this museum, that we've given it everything that we can give to it so that someone else may learn something about the past. Is it, as they say, you forge in the past for the future. And that's what we're doing for future generations. Because you were talking about critical race theory. Uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that, that's, to me, that's just ridiculous. It is history. It doesn't have to be black history. This is history. We had just as much a part of history as anyone else, but no one talked about it. Now we want to open up the door so that everyone can know about it. So I know I've gone beyond two minutes and I'm sorry, but that's just some of my thoughts. Daryl, you're up. Oh, you're giving me enough. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, I, actually, I did have something on my mind, um, but now I, I guess I will think about that. You know, I, I go back and I look at Booker T. Washington School itself, and um, the school sat empty from '62, I believe it was, to '75, and then yes. it was burned. It was burned down. Arson or arson. accident, but it was arson. They burned it down with all the items in it, you know, pictures, um, books, trophies, trophies uh, band instruments, a library, you know, the only thing left is a historical plaque there. And that does, that, that, that about broke my heart. But now we can try to make up for that. And that's what I intend on doing and pulling everything I can, every bunny out of the hat and getting every picture, anything I can get my hands on regarding Ashland, Kentucky, Black history and pulling it in. So um, that is, uh, yeah. So that's, that was my thought. Okay. Well, one other thing came to my mind. I love this, <laughs> I love this. And you're fine, <laughs> take your time. Um, will there be, you say that children is free there will be a donation for adults. For the education. Uh, for the education, okay. Mm -hmm. But to visit the exhibits is free? No, well, now to visit the museum, there will be a cost for that to get in. But the education itself um, will be free. But now I will also say this, and I'm sure that my aunt agrees with me. Um, if there is a child that wants to come in there, they don't have the money, then they will come in. We, we won't worry about that. Okay. But initially, yes, we will charge um, for, you know, adults and children, like, like other museums do. But if a child comes, if they, you know, they don't have the money, they are more than welcome to come in. We will not turn anyone away. Not at all. Now, no. how, because now you're, you're 501c3, how can folks donate to the museum? Well, mailing, and Aunt Bernice, uh, you want to jump in on that? We have our mailing address is 901 Kilgore Drive. And that's Ashland, Kentucky, 41101. And you make it, address it to the C.B. Knuckles Community Center and Black History Museum. 
Repeat that one more time, please. The, our mailing address is CB Knuckles Community Center and Black History Museum, 901 Kilgore Drive, Ashland, Kentucky, 41101. Okay. And Bernice? Yes. Say it again for the folks that's not paying attention and the folks <laughs> that's sitting in the back, because you, somebody's going to say, I didn't get that. Please say it one more time. All right. For those of you who were not listening previously, <laughs> it is mail it to C.B. Knuckles Community Center and Black History Museum, 901 Kilgore Drive, Ashland, Kentucky, 41101. All right. And Bernice. Thank you, friend. Ray. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on Our Voices. You all take care and be safe, okay? All Thank right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.